Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. Michael Noland here, and you know, in my very last video, we talked about whether Dolly Parton should be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. If you got past the very first part of that video, you would have noticed that I talked a whole lot about a certain gentleman, a certain Jan Wenner. Now, I just uploaded that video yesterday, less than 24 hours ago, and I went out to my mailbox today, and uh, someone must be uh, older than 50 in the home because uh, we got the latest issue of ARP. Now, never mind who it's addressed to, but it's interesting, this particular issue and the time it came out, 24 hours less than my last video, I noticed that the article on page 66 included, at the epicenter, a rock and roll memoir. And take a look at the picture here. I cannot believe this picture, folks. Here we have Bono. Over here we have Bruce Springsteen. Here we have Mick Jagger. And who is this guy? Yeah, Jan Winner. <sighs> It's almost like they're presenting themselves as the Mount Rushmore of rock. Anyway, the article covers uh, just portions of his memoirs of what he calls his rock and roll lifestyle. I'd like to talk about that for a second. You know, I've lived a rock and roll lifestyle. I've uh, worked a full-time job to support a band that uh, never quite had the time to get to that next level. But I've been involved in music all my life. And you know what my rock and roll lifestyle entailed? My rock and roll lifestyle entailed taking my daughter out of school and homeschooling her because schools here in California have gotten so horrible that I was afraid she was gonna get out of high school with no education at all. Now I started homeschooling my daughter while she was in fourth grade all the way through and including eighth grade. Ninth grade, she came to me and said she wanted to go to a school. We had to set her up at a charter school that we uh, very carefully looked into and we would take her to another city in order for her to get to school every day. In order to pay my bills, I worked as a psych nurse. That's been my rock and roll lifestyle, but according to this article, it's amazing. And some of this stuff is just, Precious, I've got to tell you, when he talks about uh, when he talks about his uh, encounter with Bob Dylan here, yeah, it's interesting. Um, he uh, was trying to ask him questions, and uh, let's see, uh, does this even sound like Bob Dylan? Well, Yan, I tell you, I was on the road for almost five years. It wore me down. I was on drugs and a lot of things, a lot of things just to keep going. Well, Jan, I can just see that. Yeah, that's Bob Dylan. Well, Jan, hi, let's talk. Anyway, uh, the, the article entails just a few portions from his memoirs, how uh, one time he jetted down to Rio with uh, Bruce Springsteen, you know, Mr. $5,000 to $8,000 per ticket, Bruce Springsteen, Bruce B. Springsteen S. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, and then, uh, you know, how he's been invited and almost accepted into Bono's family. And he's on such a one-to-one -one basis with Bono, he calls him B. And you know, it's interesting, when he talks about David Bowie, he talked about how David Bowie just turned him down for the Hall of Fame. And of course, if you've seen my last video, it talked about the Hall of Fame and how this guy has his greedy, sticky little fingers in the whole stinking process. Anyway, the article is complete with that photo, a few excerpts, photos of uh, Pete Townsend kissing this man on the cheek. Good one, Pete. But you know, this whole article is a very, very strange article for me to even uh, peruse, to tell you the truth. It's almost like he's trying to make each and every experience a down-home, eventful uh, kind of thing to share with his many fans. How the hell did Jan Winner ever get fans to begin with? Shall we talk about the dozens of rock bands, rock bands that Jan Winner has made a point of telling that they will never get into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? Foreigner anybody? How about Bad Company? 
Boston? Hell, how about the freaking Doobie Brothers? They're not in the Hall of Fame. I could name a dozen more bands, and uh, I am definitely going to be doing that in an upcoming video. You know, just before I set this whole video up to shoot today, I promise I won't say shoot too many times tonight, but uh, uh, one of my commenters gave me a whole list of bands. Now I've had close to 400 comments on that last video, and just before the shoot, I did try to access that particular uh, comment. Uh, when I find it, I'll give a shout out to that tribal member because it was a real eye opener. They just provided me a list of bands that hadn't made it and I, that was it. I knew I was going to have to take this on further. This is ridiculous. ARP Magazine. You know, there was also an article on what to do if your electricity runs out. You know what also happened today? I live in the Central Valley of California, by the way, folks, and we got an alert statewide, shut down all unnecessary electricity. This is the new California, folks, that we're forced to live in. Every time it gets hot, and it was hot today, we hit 113 degrees today. And you know what? We've had plenty of days over 100, but in our local area here in the Central Valley, uh, we've had a, a, a bit of a milder summer than we have had in the past, and so all of the crises freaks haven't been able to threaten to shut everything off up until we hit today. Anyway, uh, it's, it, it was interesting, just a, a conglomeration of things mentioned in this article just kind of uh, made me want to fly off the handle and shoot this video. And there's another reason why I wanted to shoot a video tonight, and I haven't done this in a while, but I just received this in the mail. All right, so yes, it is another piece of uh, wall art for the studio. This is a very inexpensive piece, and the piece I really want goes for about 200 bucks. This only cost me 20, and I thought I'd do a quick unboxing, un-enveloping, un- Anyway, let's open the damn thing, right? Let me make sure I'm not gonna cut into anything vital here, and uh, let's find out if it's what I ordered. If it's not, we can always edit this out, but I'm pretty sure this is what I've ordered. It's about the right size. Oh, yes. And now, this is very inexpensive, and it's only just a temporary placeholder. Um, I'll give this to one of my uh, nephews or somebody uh, down the road. But uh, I really love this. I love this design. I'm going to place it up on the wall just as a placeholder. I've got my eye on something a bit more expensive and a little bit more uh, flamboyant. It's not metal or anything like that, but uh, it's nice. It's got the lyrics to the dark side of the moon on it. And of course, it has in the center the symbol, the prism from that album, the dark side of the moon. All right, so uh, that about covers it. A real quick video tonight, but what do you guys think of this guy? I mean, my God, I you know, who, how in the hell is this guy showing up in AARP magazine? And you know what? The very fact that Mick Jagger, Bono, and Bruce Springsteen showed up for a cover shoot on this guy, I, ugh, it just, you know what? I've told you, the Rolling Stones, I've put them up on Mount Rock Olympus, but I have a love-hate relationship with that band at times. And thank you, Keith Richards. That's all I can say for not showing up on this photograph. I expected it of Mick. And Bruce Springsteen, you know, I don't know. Uh, it's all almost like this East Coast power grab in rock and roll these days, you know? Uh, these guys meet in skyscrapers, they jet down to Rio, they hang out in multi-million dollar homes and somehow try to make it all sound homey. I, I don't know. And of course, Bono. Bono is a photo opportunistic kind of guy. He'll show up anywhere where there's a camera and especially a microphone. Open mouth, insert foot. You know what, Bono? You're in great company in this issue of AARP. My God, folks, how has your rock and roll lifestyle been, by the way? You're rock fans. You have spent 
a lot of your money over the decades on stereo systems and, and new albums and uh, replacing older albums, uh, replacing albums with new formats and then going back to that. I mean the tens and tens of thousands of dollars that your average rock fan has invested into these clowns. Think about it. How has your rock and roll life been? Are your memoirs full of jutting down to Rio, hanging out in multi-million dollar homes, calling Bono B? Ugh, and the fact that it's Jan Winner. I'm gonna tell you right now, I put him with two other individuals as the axes powers of rock. Now, if you remember in World War II, they were the bad guys. Jan Winner, Phil Spector, Alan Klein, and we're gonna talk about that in a future video as well. You know, folks, there are enemies of the state of rock and roll out there. And Jan Winner, as far as I'm concerned, is one of the biggest enemies to the whole spirit of this art form that we love. I'll tell you why David Bowie wasn't that interested in uh, becoming uh, part of your Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and why he wasn't even that impressed with you, Jan, is, well, you're a bore, a complete bore of a man. You started something hot in San Francisco, shored it up, shaped it up, shipped it out, moved to the East Coast and never looked back. Anyway, there's my two cents, as one of my commenters said in one of their excellent comments in my last video. But uh, you know what? That's my two common senses for you. All right, so that about does it. It was a quick video tonight. I wasn't even expecting to film a video tonight, but when this stuff came into the mail, I, I had to set up and shoot. The names that you see in front of me, by the way, are new subscribers. I am behind. I am going to be honoring every subscriber that subscribes to the tribe up to and including the end of this month, September 30th. A big thank you to Sue Peacock. Thanks so much for your donations, Sue. You know, those donations go to help support the channel. We're trying to get uh, connected to a new computer system here. That's gonna save a lot of time in regard to me shooting videos and being able to perform them in a quicker and faster fashion. You know, I'm a one-man shop here. The whole channel shoots its videos on an iPhone. My entire computer system is my iPad. Everything is done between those two devices, and we need to up our game a bit in order to really produce. A lot of it has to do with memory and the instant availability of memory that you need to really shoot these videos out. All right, so that's it for this video for tonight. I wanna thank each and every one of you who have shared my videos. You know, folks, at last count, we are at 15,865 subscribers. Welcome to the tribe, each and every one of you. All right, so if you haven't had a chance to subscribe to the channel, it's easy as pie. All you have to do is hit that subscribe to the tribe button, hit that top bell notification, and you'll be notified of all my future videos. All right, so I'm Michael Noland, this is The Bottom Line, and I'll see you in my next video.